Can you still hear? Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May my God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
baptism, and may I, during the protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joy of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the great number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests who were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am coming to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where am I going? Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray right to it. It's something that when you look at the readings, and especially that first reading, speaks to us of the deacon and how important the deacon is in the church. We see that with Deacon Bob, and the reason why I bring attention to that first reading is because our seminarian Greg would have been ordained yesterday, um, and you would have been having your stall today, and you would have been standing here giving the homily instead of me. So, um, so we wait patiently, as all of us wait patiently, and I have to say that Greg's probably the most patient person 
I ever know. Are you the most patient in your family? Thank you. He uh, he's going with the going no, <laughs> no. So, but but the the when you look at that, you see how the injustice was in the early church, and it's something how Pope Francis brings that awareness today, and especially during this pandemic, how he's always concerned about all of us, how he's always concerned about those on the fringe, how he's always concerned about his people. The gospel, though, is a gospel, the first part's one that I usually use in Christian burials for funerals, but I, I don't want to give a funeral homily today, um, especially on Mother's Day. But it's something that when Jesus was speaking to them, they not yet understood. And the interesting thing was that Jesus is saying that we have rooms prepared. There is a room prepared for me, there's a room prepared for you. And the thing is, is that we'll eventually get there, but we need to do it through Jesus. We need to do it through our baptism to Jesus Christ. We need to do it by being able to be faithful to all that we do in following the Lord. And the early apostles, the early disciples, when they were, when they were listening to him, this was before his suffering, death, and resurrection, when they were listening to him, all they were thinking about was, well, if we knew what direction he's going, we can get a roadmap. We'll be able to find him. How many times in scripture you see Jesus in the multiplication of loaves or Jesus in this great teaching and he goes by, he kind of disappears and goes by himself to a quiet place, a place to be alone. And then his apostles had to follow him. That's what they were thinking. And yet Jesus is like, you've been with me so long you don't understand. It seems as though we've been in, in seclusion and quarantine for so long and we still don't understand that the way we can be people of the resurrection is to put our trust totally in the Lord. In the gospel it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Oh my God, as parents, as, God, as grandparents, as, as mothers, our hearts are, 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 are shattering, they're breaking, they can't be with their children, they can't be with their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren. But the message goes on that there's a room prepared for us. This too will pass. When we were being raised, who was the one when we were afraid to say, don't be afraid, you can do it. You're able to do it. You're able to make that move. You're able to go to school in kindergarten or, or high school or, or college. It's the mom, the mother, to be able to support you, to be your biggest fan. And now we're able to give them thanks. We're able to praise them. And we're better woman but our blessed mother. Pope Francis, in his message this morning, turns around and says, Mary is the healing mother. And I don't know about you, but every mother seems to be a healing mother. They know what words to say. They know how, what to say and, and what to do. I think one thing I, I miss mostly, even in my mother's late years of being 88, is going home and, and having a cup of coffee and, and having her have a cup of tea. She loves Father Nullick of her because he brings the tea from Sri Lanka. And just to hear her tell the stories of my father in the past and to know that how many times growing up I would sit there and tell her the stories about all the wonderful things that I was doing. And it's something that when we look at that, and we look at the scriptures, that we know that it's, it's interesting that in this scripture, Jesus talks about being one with the Father. He doesn't talk about the Holy Spirit, but he talks about his oneness with the Father, and truly to get to the Father's through Jesus. And what better way to get to Jesus but through Our Lady, Our Blessed Mother, and how important that is. You know, it's something that with, with all this stuff, with the virus, everything seems to be developing and it brings back memories. Father um, Joseph would remember when we worked together at Robert Wood and I was in the children's hospital, especially in the pediatric intensive care. And if I was with a family in the most, most difficult time, there was just silence. And I would start praying, but I always kept my rosaries. 
in my pocket and I would pull my rosaries out and I would start saying my rosaries to myself quietly as I, as I stayed with them. And I remember going to the nurse's station and the resident looking at me and asking me, are those your worry beads? I go, these are more than just worry beads. These are, these are so powerful because they bring me to my God through his mother. I invite you that as, as, as always to keep these beads close to you, whether it's in your pocket, whether it's, it's all over the house as someone messaged me when I, when I gave my message, wherever it is, and whenever you feel that difficulty or that fear, just even if you say one, one Hail Mary, and my, I go through, <laughs> these, these here are so worn down that the sisters at the Carmel keep making them for me because they're the only ones that don't break in my pocket because I can't keep them in a case because I, sometimes I just need to put my hand in the pocket and say one Hail Mary and, and do that and, and intercede through her. And I want end quoting one of Father Joseph's favorite, favorite saints. Um, everyone thinks it's Saint Festina, but she's his favorite saint too. But his other favorite saint is Saint John Paul II. And I remember in 1978 being in, in college and, um, and, and, and be watching TV and seeing the new Holy Father, not even thinking of a priesthood back then, and having him go out there, and what were the words he said? Do not be afraid, and all through his papacy, do not be afraid. I leave you that, because who taught us that? Who taught our Holy Father that? Truly it was our Lord, and our Lord works through our mothers. A blessed Mother's Day, a different Mother's Day, and I thank God the cemeteries are open for all those whose mothers are in heaven and that they're able to go and be able to spend time and be able to thank them and to show them there's nothing to be afraid of because I know I have a room prepared for me. one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The first deacon or witness to Christ by service to serve the community of faith. Let us also take part in multitude service to one another. Please respond to our petitions by praying. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders and citizens of powerful countries, that their commitment to peace and justice inspire others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of every nation, that they live their lives with courage and hope while everyone is going through this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the doctors, the nurses, first responders, researchers, caretakers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. 
May they know your protection and your peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers, women who cannot conceive, and those who have lost children, that they receive grace to enjoy their, to enjoy their blessings and bear their crosses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of those who are sick or have died, and all those who have died from the coronavirus, be with them as they worry and as they grieve. Defend them from illness and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone in this, our local church, our parish, that we show forth God's love in word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, especially Doris Pickering, Ethel Milinchek, Thomas Chervenak, Roseanne Goodness, and John J. Reducci, Jr., that they may find eternal happiness in the presence of our risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers, both living and deceased, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safe return of all the men and women in our armed forces, for the safety of all police officers, the safety of all firefighters, for the special intentions in our prayer request book, for the homebound, for the sick, and for the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and Lord, have mercy. We thank you for the gift of faith. Listen to the petition we present to you. For those in need, grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me win. 
studying in one piece I give you. Look at us and by the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On behalf of um, 
the, the fathers, the deacon, the seminarian, and of course, Sister Charles to Rebecca, we'd like to wish all of our, our mothers a, a, a wonderful and a happy Mother's Day. And, um, and, we, and we're so grateful that we're able to pray at this Mass for those mothers and grandmothers and godmothers who are looking down at us. So I, I just want to say that um, to, to a blessed Mother's Day, very different Mother's Day, um, but we remember to keep safe and keep that safe distance. That's so important. I also want to thank those who brought food for the food collection. Um, they're coming very early tomorrow morning. The church will be open um, a little longer this afternoon, so you can still bring it this afternoon in the breezeway. Um, and God willing, we'll be able to do another collection next month. Uh, but I know that they, that they are very much looking forward to it. And I will take pictures of it and post it on, uh, on the website, on the, in the bulletin, as well as on my Facebook and on Instagram. Um, I also want to thank all of you who donate to St. Helena's, whether it's online or dropping the envelopes off, ringing the bell and putting it under the rock. Um, you know, if, if we don't come right away, there's always someone in the house, we will come and we will get those envelopes there. And, um, and even some that leave it in the church here. Um, I walk around the church and I find it in the basket under the credence table, the table in the back that has the bread and wine in it. So, um, so I, I'm so grateful. You know, um, we applied for the, um, for the PPP loan. We got approved, but we didn't get anything. So, so and there's no bingo for the school, so uh, so it's been very stressful, but I turn it over to the Lord, and I turn it over to all of you, because every week you, you seem to show up, you seem to be able to, to continually um, giving to the church, and I'm so, so grateful for that, and I thank you um, for that, um, from, from, for just so grateful. And also, um, the Holy Father is asking on May 14th, which I believe is Thursday, Thursday. He's having a day of prayer, universal day of prayer, fasting um, for victims and for an end to the for for the coronavirus. So I know that a lot of um, our, our our seniors are, are on medication, and I don't ask you to fast the whole day, but um, but we ask that that we do some sort of sacrifice and charity. So it's it's prayer, fasting, and charity. So um, so definitely. Um, you know, um, look at that on the 14th and, and definitely be able to bring, bring um, attention on that day and know that we're praying with our Holy Father and the Universal Church. Alrighty, and um, Greg, next week and the week after, we'll be giving his reflections. And um, I don't know if I can say... Is it public where you're going? Your assignment? I think so. He thinks it's public, but anyway, his assignments... <laughs> His assignment for, um, for um, in May 24th, he's going that evening. Um, I'm, so, I'm so grateful. I know his parents are watching, but I'm so grateful to them that um, his assignment is at Our Lady of Fatima um, Parish in Piscataway. So for the parishioners, his family, for all of us, um, it's not far at all. And, um, and I'm gonna find out what mass he's preaching at and the Father, if Father Joseph or, or Father Keith is saying mass here, I'm going to go and stand in the back and listen to him. So, um, so I know a lot of us, um, you, you're going to have your followers following you. So we, we just can't wait. We're so proud of you and, and so proud of, um, of all the accomplishments that you have made. My homily is longer than, uh, my announcements are longer than my homily. I apologize. Not really. I don't apologize. No, your homily is longer. My homily is longer. <laughs> The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. And may our God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A great day. It's been